Eldred's vision becomes clouded by red and shadow as the bright falling snow cascades down upon this recent fight, red staining all around her. And the calls of Uktunu sounding so distant. All the pain, the frozen shivers numb away as she hears her heart beat within her head. And as she slowly blinks, the world around her, once a winter scape, now resembles those dark dreams that she's been having escape of red and shadow. She feels her heartbeat slow as she slowly turns and gazes about her, no longer seeing the homestead or the staple no longer seeing the two warriors she felled in front of her, or hearing Uktenu in their panic trying to get to her. There is only her heartbeat. And as she tries to focus her mind to try and rally her spirit. She turns her gaze and she sees a figure, one she has not seen before, a mass of shadows, almost like the gloom, wispy floating robes, a face unseen. But its presence does not oppress Eldred. She gets no sense of darkness or any intention of harm from this entity before her. Though as large as this figure is an imposing, it floats before her. And though it does not say any words, Eldred can feel what the shadow is trying to convey to her. She is on the edge that she is facing death. And she must make a choice to press on and bear the pains until their next meeting. Or embrace the end and find new life beyond. A sword from the shadowy ground comes up, hilt rising before her. The shadow reaches out with one hand, gesturing to the blade. And then it reaches out the other, as though ready to take her hand. There is something that she must do. If she wishes to maintain her life and finish her vows and see her promises to the end,
the feelings and thoughts of this entity impress upon her this avatar of death. And Eldred, she starts to feel her heartbeat fade away from her. She reaches out a hand. Uh, welcome to another Unbound Lands stream. This is Unbound Lands cast on into death. Um, first and foremost, uh, if you don't know who I am, I am Natalie. You can see as it is underneath my chin here on screen. You can find me on most places on the internet with Ghost Candle, especially Twitter, where I do all my announcements and stuff. Um, or if you want to find me on Twitch, if you're watching this as a VOD on YouTube, Ghostly Candle is how you can find me on Twitch, which I highly recommend to follow me if uh, you're not. Um, and because it is the first of the month, I do have a little bit of housekeeping to do. So first and foremost, um, streaming for this month is uh, there's a theme that I try and do every month. Last month it was just variety. So different games, different art. Uh, this month, uh, it, our theme's Dragons. So if you are following me on Twitch, you'll see when I do art streams, we're going to be uh, illustrating dragons, um, doing studies towards making better designs for dragons. Um, our game, our main core game for the month will be Dragon Age Origins Ultimate Edition. I never played a Dragon Age game. I see people rave about it all the time. Um, so I'm very excited to get that started and experience that side so I can also rave about it all the time. Um, I will also be starting up uh, Pokemon Nuzlocke once again. I tried before, got about halfway before I gave up. This time we're coming back, doing Pokemon Soul Silver, and I have a beautiful new setup all ready to go. So hopefully, uh, things go better this time. We'll see. Usually Whitney is like the hump to get over, so we'll see when that happens. Um, otherwise. Uh, to bring it all back to what we're doing here today. Uh, this is a solo campaign of Iron Sworn. If you don't know what Iron Sworn is, it is a tabletop RPG made by Sean Tompkin. I am neither sponsored or paid to say any of this. It's just I like the game and I want to play it. Um, and it's more than just a solo game. You can do a GM list with other people or you can do it with a GM with people. Uh, but it is a game that's pretty easy to do individually or with a couple others. Um, and you can find it all on ironsworerpg.com. There's also a space-themed version called Starforged, so check that out too. Um, and if you're curious about anything that I'm using to help me play, I'm using Foundry VET. Also not being sponsored or paid to say any of that. Just being transparent on what I'm using here. Um, otherwise, I think that's it. So let us change up the music while I play the title screen. So see you in a second. So where we left off, Eldred with Uktenu went, well, Nisha Eldred thought she went by herself, but Uktenu did end up following her. They went into the nearby settlement that the Hollow, the rageful spirit of a downed elf, um, was kind of haunting this little town, uh, which was called uh, Wolfwick. But Eldrin went to town trying to investigate to see if she can pull any insight um, as to why a hollow would be terrorizing this little settlement. Um, she did find that the villagers were a little bit resistant to receiving her. Um, it, the folks that were left were older folks and uh, some younger adults that had children to look after, um, with most having left to go to uh, Red Rock to help in the coming uh, battle that is to come around the turn of winter when they are 
making a guess that the invaders from the old world, those in the red tunics, will come up and try and uh, obtain more land. But Eldred did get some overlap between all the different stories that a man had from their village had returned back with a gaunt, uh, one of the horse creatures that elves use. Um, they seem, the stories uh, from the villagers seem like they vary on the details, but it was always consistent of there was a man, they got this horse creature, uh, but they did didn't say if it was being kept in town or if it was taken away or if it was released. It was all very non-committal going on. But Eldred was directed, at least by one individual, to go to um, the homestead that's just down in the valley from the main village proper, which Eldred did follow. Um, she was about to scope out the stable when a woman from within the homestead stepped out and called to her. They exchanged some f words, um, but the woman didn't like being questioned, didn't like that Eldred was looking into this on what happened around, um, this man in, uh, Gaunt and about the possibility of the Hollow haunting this village because of it, so the woman got very... Um, defensive and did end up coming at Eldred with her halberd to enter into a fight. During that fight, um, a man from inside came out um, and Eldred had to try and fight off both of them. She did succeed, but to her own detriment as she fell to her knees, bleeding out. Um, and the last thing that came to her was hearing Uktanu as they had appeared and tried to assist her and running towards her. So Uktanu kind of has an arm behind Eldred trying to keep her supported. They can hear the winning of the mount inside the stable, the familiar sound that is high-pitched, that can only come from a gaunt, that Uktanu knows. They look at the two bodies of the man and woman that Eldred fell, and they can just barely make out at the top of the hill um, some figures still quite a distance away and with the snow falling they're quite obscured but they do see that there is kind of a collection a couple of folk and possibly they do think and fear that maybe some of the more capable ones may start coming down into the valley Uktnu trying their best pulls up Eldred and kind of grapples them into her, or her into them. Um, there is a bit of a struggle for Uktanu, as Eldred is a much heftier being compared to their slimmer elven frame. And with the additional furs and cloaks that the Ironborn seem to wear in order to maintain themselves in winter, uh, it's a bit of a struggle for them. But they do try and pull Eldred towards the stable, um, continually calling her name. And they do look onto her face and they do see her eyes underneath her closed lids shift about and her mouth very softly open a bit and close, almost like it's trying to form words, but Uktanu, not knowing her language, is unsure if she is trying to communicate or not. But they do pull her into the stable, where inside as they do manage to just push open the door. 
uh, there is a lot of very old, dried up hay that lines across the floor. Uh, the wood and beams that support the structure is also quite old and weathered. Um, and that uh, kind of hit of cedar comes in strong, but also the smell of animal life comes in. And as Uknu quickly surveys the space, they do catch in the far end, uh, tied up from bridles and other means around different limbs, is the gaunt uh, maintained within the stable at the end. It is trying to move about and uh, kick, but it can't. It can't get loose from its bindings to have the movability that it desires. And in Uktunu's heart, they feel a lot of pain towards this. Gods were not meant to be creatures contained and held like this. The elves know that they maintain their freedom and the reason they are able to coincide and work together is to respect that. So very quickly, Uktanu, they close the door in behind them and looking over Eldred, brushing off the snow, seeing already that it's just staining and blood around them. They're gonna try and heal her to at least bandage up the wound and keep it from expelling any more blood. Um, I'm going to do a wits roll on their part, so why not? Not usual, but this is fine. Okay. So pulling up Eldred's supplies, that she's been the one kind of carrying the things she needs, as elven folk tend to utilize the land around them. Uktenu starts to find uh, bindings and wrappings that they can use and they start pulling off uh, her furs and cloaks, trying to get at the wound. It's very much one that replicates the scar that she had that they have seen before. Um, so now it's just fresh opened wounds coming from her shoulder down to her sternum. And very quickly, they start applying pressure and start trying to stitch up and bandage up the wound. There is a moment where a gasp comes out of Eldred. She doesn't quite open her eyes or anything, but there is a stir of life in her. And as Uktenu finishes, they know it isn't the best job in the world, but they're on limited supplies and in tight circumstances, and they need to start moving before the villagers come. As they, Uktenu does not know how they would react to finding two of their own dead in the snow. So they rush over to the stall that has the gaunt, pulling out one of their little stone blades. And they start cutting away the bindings and ropes. And once enough of them are free, the gaunt does start um, braying and kicking about, thrashing within the stall. And once uh, more of them start to break apart or get cut by Utenu, leaps over this little doored wall in front of it very eager to try and break out but Uktenu is knowledgeable about these creatures as they do have one themselves and they call to the gaunt very softly hand very gently raised. The gaunt 
whinnies a bit and stamps as its head turns more towards Eldred laying on the ground before looking back towards Uktenu. And Uktenu very slowly pulls out the two broken ma or the broken mask as in two pieces and raises up and presents it to the gaunt. Just kind of reaching it out. And the gaunt does calm down a bit, its head falling as it approaches Uktenu. And with big hefts of its nostrils and flares, it sniffs in the mask. It gives a small, quiet whine. And in its eyes, Uktenu can see that it does recognize this mask, the smell of this mask, even its broken state. As they are quite intelligent creatures. Uktenu pulls the two pieces together and holds it. And there is a flare of white light that appears behind the two eyes of the mask. And it flickers. And it does quietly speak out. Though it sounds like crackling of dry leaves and wisping wind. Uktenu can understand. And as this is happening, Eldred is starting to rise up from her um, position, bracing herself back up. And in a somewhat daze, is glancing about before she turns to look in Uktenu's direction, who now looks up towards her, seeing her movement. And for a moment, as she now opens her eyes and takes in the scene, she sees that glow from the eyes of the mask and the swirl of gentle wind picking up hay and dirt. And for a moment, she's ready to just accept the idea of this hollow possibly coming back and taking advantage of the fact she can no longer defend herself. But instead, as the mask rises up in its two pieces, Eldred sees that it is talking, possibly talking, with Uktenu. And she watches as the mask turns its head to the gaunt, who still nostrils flaring and giving little grunts. Wind swirls around, gently going through the mane of the beast. And the mask looks towards her. Before it tilts over to Uktenu, who nods towards them with a gentle bow. And the mask blackens up and wisps away within the gentle breeze into ash and dust. And then the only wind to be heard is that from the winter happening outside the stable. Eldred winces as she tries to bring herself up, but she feels her strength is out from her. She 
She takes in a breath and just feels that sharp pain go through her whole body. Uktenu does rush over, helping her up to her feet. She just gives a sigh, looking at the god who is now watching them very intently with sad eyes. And looks to Uktenu. Right? Well, the hollow won't haunt this place anymore, at least. That's good. We should get back. And as she begins saying this, the both of them start hearing voices kind of outside the stable yelling out. Aldred places a hand on Uktenu, kind of pushing them off as she goes towards the door. And when she does open it, the barn door, she looks out and does see some figures now much closer, uh, having come down from the settlement up on the hill. It's always a tough thing to explain why combat had to happen, why life had to be taken. So, she gestures Uktenu to follow and points to the gaunt as well. Which Uktenu does turn to it, putting a hand on its neck to begin leading it out. As Eldred stands uh, in the snow close to where the combat happened, a couple of the figures do approach and they start gasping. Some with angered voices start speaking out. What, what happened? Milik, Sergia, what? And as they get closer, they look to Eldred, pointing at her, is like, What did you do to them? Eldred, standing. looks to the small cluster of people before her, the snow still heavily falling. <sighs> it wasn't going to be a peaceful end. We entered combat. And there was nothing I could do to convince them otherwise. And they are, ended up being the reason why you had a hollow on your hands. And she gestures to the gaunt as Uktenu is walking out and some of the people gasp once more in shock. Some of them saying, well, what is an elf doing here? You should be killing it. What are, what are you doing? And Eldred raises a hand says the elves did not instigate this this man whatever the reasons took the gaunt and slayed its rider and its rider became the hollow that you all had to suffer from we do not know the reasons why he wanted this creature or why he did it other than misguidance. But the hollow has now found its peace. And you all must find yours and bury your kin. And a couple of the people are still sort of whispering amongst themselves and one saying, as they step forward. 
How can you do this? What do you know? How can you even trust what the elves say? How do you even know what it's like? An Eldred picking up her bow that was left in the snow, putting it back within its place on her body, it says, I was tasked by the people of Red Rock to have an understanding with the elves and to prove that we mean well, I made a promise. I've come to understand their way somewhat. They are not murderous or mean as harm in the way that some of these stories may have had. They just wish to protect their homes, their wilderness, their the nature of these lands. I don't care to convince you. And I will not stay. I've made my judgment upon you as you have upon me, but I will not have this gaunt here anymore. They will go back to where they belong. And Uktenu has already propped themselves on to the creature, ready to ride it out. As Eldred turns back around and begins to accept help from Uktenu to get on. And from the faces of the crowd, they are very darkened. Some of them looking sadly to the bodies as they start surrounding the two. Looking them over. While others are staring at Eldred in great disdain. But Eldred and Uktenu very quickly dart off as the gaunt has no issue traversing deep winter snows as this is what they are built for and they go into the woods they pass where they initially ran into the hollow and they begin their journey back to the elven village. And as they ride, Eldred hangs on to Uktenu weakly, but as best she can. And she knows that they can't understand her, but she begins speaking anyway, saying, Uktenu. For a moment, I was dead. And in that moment, I faced death. I swore a vow. And though others always said I was cursed, I had to make a vow, and now I carry a burden that marks my soul. There is something I must do and I can no longer stay. And she, leaning into Uktenu's back, feeling her just energy completely fade from her body as she suffered very much and they will be in need of rest soon. She 
She knows that vision was real. Because as they come to camp, as they could not reach home in a day, even with the Gaunt now taking them back, Eldred feels at her side a blade of shadow and she feels from it it pulling her to the north wanting to be placed So, I need to make a vow. This is a vow that is of extreme. Zeldra comes to understand that her vow is to bring this blade someplace in the far north. And during the camp, we will see if we can try and heal. This time, Eldred is awake and able to do stuff. All right, strong hit. So let me go to player screen so you can actually see stuff there. There we go. So between Uktenu's earlier attempt and now Eldred, she's back up to at least three. And we've had some interesting rules, which what determined that beginning. We did face death. We got a weak hit on it. So we ended up swearing an iron vow. Which... Is what we are, and we got the revenant path from meeting death. Our momentum also goes up. Ah. By noon the next day, the pair of them on their beast returned to town of the elven settlement that is well hidden within the woods and even with Eldred trying to pay attention she can never seem to quite picture the pathways that lead to this they didn't enter in the direction that they had initially left and it seems the vines which she learned the blood vines are something that the elven folk do utilize to protect their homes as they come back, uh, the villagers um, come around and Teresk approaches and being the one that knows the same language as Eldred kind of raises up a hand. It's like, oh, glad you two were able to return. That seemed, seemed like you weren't gone too long, but... I guess this gaunt must have belonged to that hollow. And Eldred nods as she comes down and Uktenu also leaves and begins talking with some of the other villagers that are speaking with them. Eldred approaches 
Asterisk. Yes, um... So we didn't get the full story, though. Maybe Uktunu knows more, as they seem to have talked to the mask, but, um... It seemed the... The elf was attacked for their mount, and the first... the ironborn that were keeping it, um... We're trying to make sure they kept it. So. Interest cocks their head a little bit. Nods. Well. The elders will want to see you and speak to you about your progress. Uktenu. And he says something to Uktenu as he just th gestures them to come. And he also guides Aldred along the way, going towards the uh, structure that the three elder elves tend to take counsel in. As they enter, uh, Tur Turek announces them for what Eldred can assume, and the three elves that were initially sitting around the fire stand up and look in their direction. And they are nodding and seem to be in a very relaxed body posture as uh, they kind of move about to give room for others to join them in the pit. But as Elder does begin to approach, the one elder with the mask that is half black, half white, puts up their hand. And as they all look at her and her stiffening up, kind of very, in a split second, anxiety washing over, the elder's hand goes from being raised up to gesturing towards her hip as they have taken notice of a blade she had not left with. And Eldra turns her hip, moving her cloak so that the blade can be more presented. And as she looks down to it back up, she sees just the glint of glowing eyes of all the masked faces looking at her and she looks too Tereske. This music does not fit. <laughs> Apologies. We're not in a fight. But she looks too Tereske who begins saying something to the elders and then looks back to her says so you did die is that what happened and Eldred kind of suddenly nods a bit says I unfortunately had to kill my own kind we entered combat and even though I was able to bring them down first in glory, I was also struck down. But how do you know what does this blade mean to you? And Tress turns back to the elders talking and the one does approach her and speaks, and as they do in their kind of sharp voice, it isn't a voice of... It's not harsh, though it is sharp, and Eldred doesn't get a sense of judgment or any disdain from it. But Tresk does translate and says, 
us firstborn of these lands know of death. We revere shadows that take our souls beyond to where they will be in a place welcomed into by our ancestors. But death will sometimes seek a vow with someone that they sense could aid. Hmm. How to put this in your tongue? We understand that death has chosen you for a task. This is an honor and a burden, as now you have to truly show you earn your life. You sacrificed yourself for a promise and now have made another to maintain your life so that you may finish what is promised. For this we are grateful and saddened. And Eldred nods. As are going to take this opportunity as a means to make a bond. And hopefully it does well. I don't think we have anything to help us in bond making. Okay. Wait. I think we already asked to try and forge a bond, so I may not have had to roll it because we did the promise. Scrolling back and trying to see where it is. <laughs> notes. This is where notes come in handy, actually. Uh, yes, we already did a promise on this, so this was part of our promise was for a forged bond. So we'll ignore that roll. We now have a bond with the, oh, I didn't mean to roll that because we're not done. <laughs> that was an epilogue thing. Um, I'll figure out how to add that later because it's not letting me mark it. Oh, there it is. So with that, Aldred continues to explain what happened with Uktunu's help, and she does learn that Uktunu did speak with the mask, and her uh, assumption of that the hollow was attacked for their mount was correct. Um, the elf was out hunting on their own when a man came and pulled them off and broke into their skull with their blade, a great long sword, which Eldred 
notes is of matching description to the man she fought. Um, and with the uh, elf taken out, he took hold of the gaunt and took it back to the village. Aldred that night did contemplate on this whole thing. He was a young man and capable. So if the stories were true that th these men were coming out and quote unquote got raided, maybe it wasn't that they got raided, but this man separated from the group and in a cowardly, cowardly action killed for this ride, went back to his settlement and tried to hide the fact that he was meant to go to Red Rock, as with everyone else. So that kind of pulled her from her guilt a little bit, though taking a life is never something that she means to if it can be helped. But she does say that she can no longer stay and that in the next couple of days she will need to prepare herself to leave. Those in the village do aid her in helping with her wounds and with their means of healing and medicine. It does seem to recover faster than what she's used to amongst the Ironborn. So... And during this time, as she gets resupplied, making new arrows and getting ready for the long journey back to Red Rock to at least share her story of what happened here and what was achieved with the elves. She is brought to the community center as a feast is put together it's kind of a going away for her. Tress explains that it is very... Hmm. Elves do not say goodbye as they believe that there is always reunion that comes amongst their people. And even though that she may not be a firstborn as they are, she has shown care and stubbornness <laughs> and that she is willing to do what she must and honor her vows even when things turn dire and since they wish for her success and hopes that these peoples from the old world do not destroy any peace that has come about in the last few generations between the Ironborn and the Firstborn. Though they will... They will not step in to fight. We'll make sure they do not join against the Ironborn. They bring together all those present having a feast a celebration of both life finding a soul's finding peace and for the going away of a new friend and during this Aldred is brought forth and for her now becoming a newly obtained member of this community. She is given some wood 
and some carving tools. And she is directed to carve a mask. Which Tarusk explains that this is a very great honor as masks for the elves is something... It isn't something to hide who they are, but something to express who they are. Each mask is individual to the elf. Each mask, from the very wood to what is carved and painted upon them, represents what they are to their core. And to be of Ironborn allowed to make a mask is a sign of friendship and respect. So now, the celebrations go on and Eldred carves this mask. It is of a really deep red wood. But it almost looks black with wisps of white that just crackles through the edgings of it and the indents she carves through holding out the eyes where hers would come and look through She shapes out the jaw, the um, jowls, and the temples. But otherwise, it's very simple. And when she's done, Teresk tells her, "This is a ghost wood. It is of one of shadow and spirit." The essence of this wood will aid you when you need it. As he translates from those that are almost in ritual, welcoming her into this and uh, telling her what this all means, they raise up their hands as she puts the mask on and they all cheer out in an almost song-like chorus sounding like rain and leaves and it is gentle and clear and surreal but very beautiful as they all sing this song in their language And as the night darkens the woods and the burning fires of the village start to dampen out, Aldred returns to her little hut, mask still on her face. She begins packing up what very little thing she has. She lays the blade that death has presented her to make her vow upon onto her bedding and looks it over. From hilt to tip of blade, it just looks like pure shadow. There is no glistening within the metal. And even when close to heat, after a few minutes where most blades would get hot, it is stone cold to touch. The blade is simple. It is curved, coming to a strong, long point. 
and the end of it has an almost saber-like hilt with a cross guard. A little different than what Eldred is used to with her very long, um, or not long, but a short sword that is very straight and sturdy. <sighs> she takes in a sigh as she closes her eyes tight, scrunching up uh, the muscles on her face. Try to remember the image that death had put upon, into her mind to impress upon her where to go. A series of standing stones. Tunnels. Caves. Rigid scapes and mountains into a stone great city. And beyond that, ruins. Ruins more ancient. Beyond firstborn, possibly. As she focuses hard, recalling everything, trying to keep it within her mind. That is where we're going to end tonight's session. <laughs> no combat. Been a while since we had a no combat session. Um, yeah, I did roll Endure Death before coming into this. Because I should have done it when we hit zero. And, whew, yeah. Got a weak hit on it, which means we have to do something. And with our experience, I decided we also get rewarded the Revenant pat Path as an asset. Um, which that path as an asset from... I clicked on the right one. Essentially one that you can obtain if you face to death, which Eldred did. Um... And yeah, now she has a new vow that is also her most extreme one, as it can be with formidable or extreme, but due to the circumstances, this will be her most extreme one. So we'll see how that goes and if she can make it there. Um, and yeah, so hope you enjoyed tonight's little story session. Um, Ooh, my, my man always goes blank by the end. <laughs> um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed. If you haven't followed me already, please drop me a follow. I am very, very, very close to affiliate staging of uh, Twitch, so I would appreciate it. Um, if you like what I do, you can find me on Ko-Fi. That's uh, ko-fi.com slash ghostscandal. It's also here on this uh, scene currently. Um, it's the bottom left corner here. Here, wrong side. <laughs> Uh, so you can throw tips uh, there my way since I'm not being paid or sponsored for this in any way. Um, so that is deeply appreciated. You can also find uh, tips to um, through stream elements if you want to go that direction as well, which is in the descriptions down below here on Twitch. And if you're watching this as a VOD on YouTube, well, all the things you need to know is also in the description box below the video. Uh, so we will be at this again next week. But you can always come around for my other uh, stream sessions. Tomorrow we have art, where it will be our first day of doing uh, dragon-themed art. And then Friday we will be playing Dragon Age. So can come by for that. If that's what you're into, because I am a variety of things, follow my channel. Should. Whew. Now that that stress is over. We will say good night. I hope you enjoy yourselves. Have a beautiful day, night, evening, whatever it is for your time zone. Remember to hydrate. I'm going to take a sip right now of my coffee. A very cold coffee because my basement's cold. And once again, please come back if you enjoy my content. I'd appreciate it because I love doing this. And we will see you next time. <laughs>